Hello, Matthews Gatos here. Welcome to part two of section 7.4, reciprocal functions of quadratic functions. If you haven't watched the linear video, you need to watch that one first because I have all the steps for how to graph reciprocal functions in that video. So in this video, we're just going to do three examples where the function will be quadratic. So let's start with our first one here. We're going to graph y equals x squared minus 4 and its reciprocal. So following the steps that we did for linear, I'm going to start by graphing what my function is first. And right away, I notice a difference that I have two x-intercepts here. So looking at my x-intercepts of my function of negative 2 and 2, that tells me on my restrictions on my reciprocal function, we'll have vertical asymptotes at negative 2 and 2. Of course, every reciprocal function has a horizontal asymptote at y equals to 0. And then I'll just graph the y-intercept of negative 4. When I take the reciprocal of negative 4, it is negative a quarter. So a little small number, um, but still an important one to help us with the shape of the graph. So let's look at our invariant points, and that's the second difference that you're going to see. We have two invariant points. So the graph y2 equals 1 crosses our original parabola in two different places. So these points are invariant because they're both on the function and on the reciprocal. Let's do the same thing for negative 1. So graphing it for negative 1, you can see it also has two points as well. Notice the points are on either side of the vertical asymptote, just like happened in linear functions. So I now have six sections instead of four sections. So let's look at my original graph. There's my six sections. Notice there is graph in only three of them. So there's no graph in each one of these sections. So there will be no graph in those sections for the reciprocal either. So we have three sections that our graph is going to be in. We only have five points. So we're going to use increasing and decreasing of the function to help us, as well as the fact that the graphs at the end hug the asymptotes. So let's look in my first section here. You can see that f of x is increasing in this section. The y values are getting bigger. So one over a big number is a small number. So in this section here, they will be decreasing. So I know they're going to hug the asymptotes, but the y values are going to get smaller passing through that point, and it will look like that. Okay, let's look at the other section. On this side here, f of x is also increasing. All my y values are getting big. 1 over a big number is a small number. So in this section here, all of the points will be decreasing, getting smaller. So they're going to hug the asymptotes pass through that invariant point and again hug the asymptote all the while decreasing. So that's a good start. The middle section, let's look at the middle section. So it looks like I go here to the y-intercept and I'm decreasing. So f of x in this part here is decreasing, but then it has a turnaround point, which quadratics do, called the vertex, and then it's increasing. So in that section, it's decreasing and also increasing. So in this section here, the same thing's going to happen. So when it's decreasing, the reciprocal will increase. And then when it passes the y-intercept, see how it's increasing? The reciprocal will decrease. So I think I have those backwards. Let's try that again. There we are. So it's going to be increasing on one side of the y-intercept and decreasing on the other. Again, hugging the asymptotes. So here I'm going to be increasing, hugging the asymptote, pass through those points, and as soon as I get to the y-intercept, I'm going to, that's my turnaround point, I'm going to start decreasing, hugging the asymptote on the other side. So that is what my reciprocal graph will look like. Let's do a little check in my calculator. Again, remember I did zoom zero, or sorry, zoom four for decimal, zoom four for decimal. And you can see not a lot of information, but enough for me to tell that my graph looks reasonable because the shape is correct. So same process as linear, just a couple of extra steps. We're going to have two different invariant points, possibly. We're going to have two different vertical asymptotes, possibly. And then this middle section where we have both increasing and decreasing around that turnaround point. So let's look at this graph here where the a value is negative. 
So going through this one here, first thing I'm going to do is graph the denominator negative x squared plus 2x plus 8. So I'm going to graph that one. See it's facing down and I have two x-intercepts. So I have an x-intercept at negative 2 and an x-intercept at positive 4. You can see those are where my vertical asymptotes are. I also have my horizontal asymptote at 0. Now my y-intercept at 8 when I take the reciprocal is at 1 over 8. Okay, so that's a start. The next place I'm going to go to is my invariant points. So put my equation from the denominator in y1, put 1 into y2, and I find my two invariant points, and I graph them. In the next one, I'm going to do the invariant points for negative 1. So graph it for negative 1, and you can see for the original function and here, I graph those the same as well. Again, on either side of the vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote split the graph into six sections. So looking at my original graph, I can see that there is graph in half of those in three sections. So the reciprocal will also have graph in the same sections. So the last thing I need to do is just look at my areas of increase and decrease. So in this section here, f of x is decreasing. So when I take, it's getting smaller, the reciprocal of a small number will be a big number. So in this section here, f of x, 1 over f of x, will be increasing. So I'm going to hug the asymptote, increase, increase, pass through that point, and then hug the horizontal asymptote. In the section over here, you can see your y values are also decreasing. So the reciprocal will be increasing. So in this section here, I'm going to be increasing. So hugging the asymptote, increasing, passing through that point, and hugging the asymptote again. That middle section, that's always the tricky one. So I have a turnaround point just a little bit past the y-intercept. You can see that f of x is increasing to the left of it and decreasing to the right of it. So f of x is increasing on one side and decreasing on the other. So for the reciprocal function, I will be, if I'm increasing here, I will be decreasing on one side. If I'm decreasing on the other side, I will be increasing on the other. So let's look. I am decreasing on this side. So I'm hugging the asymptote. Let's try that again. Hugging the asymptote, decreasing passing through that point and here just a little bit past my y-intercept is my turnaround point and at that point I'm going to turn around and start increasing. So that is what my graph of the reciprocal would look like. So we had the same kind of hint for linear. Notice for quadratic the reciprocal is going to have these two mirror images parts and then a parabola part as well in between the vertical asymptotes. So this first one here is the reciprocal of a quadratic function with a positive a value. So when I have a positive a value, my outside arms extend up. This one over here is a reciprocal of a quadratic with a negative a value. So when I have a negative a value, my outside arms extend upwards, sorry, downwards. Positive a, they go up, negative a, they go down. So we're going to use this information in our last example here. Given the graph of the reciprocal, I want you to graph the original function and determine its equation. So let's try this one together. So I see that my arms on the outside are pointing up, so I suspect when I'm done that I will have an a value that is positive. Now let's look at my graph here, and I've got asymptotes I can see on either side to split it into sections. So it looks like I have an asymptote here at negative 1 and again at positive 3. So those asymptotes of the original function will be, or sorry, of the reciprocal function will be the x-intercepts of the original function. So I'm off to a good start. So what I know right now is it's a quadratic and I have two of my x-intercepts. So I know in factored form, this is what it looks like right now, x minus 3 and x plus 1. 
Well, that's not enough for me to finish the equation because I do need to solve for my a value. And all I know right now is that my a value should be positive. Well, let's look at the point that it passes through. The vertex here is given to us, and the vertex of the reciprocal function is 1 and negative 1 over 8. So taking the reciprocal, the original function would have a vertex at 1 and flip that number, negative 8. So I know I'm going to have a vertex down here at 1, negative 8. That is going to help me find my a value. So what I can do is substitute in 1 for x and negative 8 for y. And then I can solve for my a value. So substituting in 1 for my x, there's two x values. So now I'll just work that out. 1 take away 3 is negative 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. Multiply those together to get negative 4. And then divide both sides to get an a value of 2. So putting it all together, the equation of my original function, which is a parabola, or a quadratic in factored form, would be y equals 2 times x minus 3, x plus 1. So keep in mind your asymptotes, whether you're doing linear or quadratic, and I challenge you, especially in the time of COVID now, to have an asymptotic high five. So where you get really close and approach, but you don't actually touch. The fun actually never ends. So you guys can move on to do practice questions one to four. Detailed solutions, of course, are on D2L, and then move on to the textbook questions as needed. So I hope this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you guys for the next one. Next one.